That looks like it's going to be a problem. Get that up. You think it's stuck on the rocks? Leslie and I stopped home during a surface interval when we noticed our neighbor's umbrella upside down and in the water. Since we already had our wetsuits on, we decided to rescue it. Jump for joy. Good oceanic karma. Turns out, there's quite a bit to see from our balcony. One morning, I saw this undulating mass of sea life, so I got Leslie out of bed and we checked it out. The reason for all this frenetic activity? Horse eye jacks. And bar jacks. There was even an air attack by pelicans that would fly low, circle high, and then attack from the angle of the sun so the fish would not see them coming. Great way to start the day. We put a fair amount of effort into these subscription appeals. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. But we hope you enjoy these videos nonetheless. If you do, consider hitting the subscribe button, like the video, and share it with your dive buddies. Your actions can really help the channel grow. Thanks! Smiley face. Immediately after entering the water on our first dive at Oil Slick Leap, we saw a variety of fish cannibalizing a discarded fish head. A little later in the dive, we spotted this batwing coral crab. First time we've seen this kind. Every time I see an Atlantic Creole fish with a cymothoid isopod on its face, I cringe. They seem healthy otherwise, though. We've seen juvenile spotted drums before, but rarely in groups. And speaking of babies, we saw four juvenile spotted trunkfish. Well, Leslie saw four. Only three came out for my camera. Oh, and this damselfish was not too happy with me lingering. The diving was just spectacular at night. Yolanda, our Beyond the Corals dive guide, incredibly spotted this very small juvenile octopus. Later on, we saw this adult out on the hunt. We also saw this blue-eye hermit crab trying to get clear of some algae. Finally, We've seen cleaning stations before, but usually staffed by wrasses. This is the first time we've seen black brotula. Whenever we see a group of fish, we take notice because something's going on. One morning at Pink Beach, these surgeon and butterfly fish found a morning snack in the form of a spot wing comb jelly. There were actually quite a few jellies in the water. Here's one that wasn't being attacked. In other breakfast news, Leslie noticed this spotted eagle ray foraging in the sand for some food at 100 feet. So I went down for a closer look. This is a jolthead porgy. It might not be a particularly interesting fish, but we haven't seen any in all of our dives so far this year. Our night dive was occasionally interrupted by ribbon worms. To be honest, they were a little creepy. These two looked unique. They appear to be juvenile lizard fish. I 
I think this might be a bluehead wrasse displaying courtship colors at Alice in Wonderland. I haven't been able to confirm the ID just yet, but it does look a bit frisky with the other wrasse. Conies are rather common on the reef, but we don't see the golden variation too often. This school of blue runners was a first time spot for us. They kept their distance in about 10 feet of water on the way back to shore. Despite the shallow depth, the color is poor because they were pretty far away. Then, in literally 5 feet of water, we saw this school of bonefish. Garden eels! Usually, garden eels are quite shy, but this group at Invisibles didn't seem to mind us getting fairly close. Plus, they were easily accessible near the dive site buoy at just 20 feet. This one goes by quick. It's a Jack Creval and another first time sighting. Every once in a while, look up from the reef. You never know what might be swimming by. We saw a Palometa deeper than we've ever seen at 60 feet. Then we saw a few others. Then there was a school. Underwater memorials are solemn and special. Typically only divers get to see those, so we share them whenever we see one. Don't forget to subscribe and request notifications for each new release. Thanks!